Hi everyone. In this video, let us talk about fluosinonide. Inflammation is a process which is carried by release of various types of inflammatory mediators. Among them, interleukins play an important role. Cytokines like IL-4, interleukin-4, interleukin-5, interleukin-13, and even TNF-alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha. All these are the various types of inflammatory mediators which can increase inflammation leading to various systemic complications. So when they produce inflammation on the skin, they can produce pruritus, itching on the skin, and they can develop atopic dermatitis leading to redness of the skin, warmness, along with itching and skin rashes. Inflammation is also responsible for development of psoriasis, which can spread to the entire body or it can be located on the hands, leading to plague psoriasis. All these conditions are because of development of inflammation within the body. To treat this inflammation, we can use the different types of drugs. Among them, fluosinide is one of the topical cream indicated for skin inflammatory disorders. This drug acts as an anti-inflammatory agent, so it can be used in the conditions like pruritus, atopic dermatitis, and psoriasis. So what is this drug fluosinonide? This drug is a topical corticosteroid. That's why this drug acts as an anti-inflammatory agent, and this is one of the potent glucocorticoid, which should be carefully used. And this drug is available as a cream at a strength of 0.05% as well as 0.1%. This drug is also included in the medicated shampoos where it produces anti-inflammatory action thereby it can reduce the scabies and other inflammatory disorders. Being a potent steroid, fluosinoid should not be given in the children with age less than 12 years. So this drug is only indicated in the adults as well as in the children with age greater than 12 years. But with the use of fluosinoid, few of the points should be considered. First, this drug should be used for less than 2 weeks since it is a potent glucocorticoid. So, use of fluosinonide for greater than 2 weeks is not recommended. Similarly, this drug should be used at low dose and the total amount of the drug that is applied on the skin should be less than 60 grams per week. So, above 60 grams per week, it is not recommended due to systemic complications. Another important thing is that fluosinonide is only intended for topical purpose. It is not intended for oral use. So any accidental contamination of this drug may lead to systemic complications. Similarly, this drug is not intended for ophthalmic purpose. Any contact with eye should be immediately cleaned with plain water. Otherwise, it can produce some irritation and redness of the eye. Similarly, this drug is not intended for intravaginal use. So fluosinonide Cream is only used for topical purpose that should be applied on the skin in order to reduce the inflammatory response. So today in this video, let us discuss what are the important precautions of this drug, how this drug acts, what are the side effects, doses, all these things we will discuss in this video. Now let us the precautions of this drug. So one of the important precautions of fluosinide is that this drug can enter into the systemic circulation. So systemic absorption of this drug may suppress HPA axis, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, which results in the decreased release of cortisol leading to various systemic complications. So with toxic dose of fluosinide, it can suppress the HPA axis, leading to many of the symptoms just similar to Cushing syndrome. So by suppression of HPA axis, fluosinide can produce Cushing syndrome, which produce various symptoms like increased weight gain, red face as well as moon face, hypertension increase in the blood pressure can be observed as well as this drug can also increase the glucose levels resulting in hyperglycemia. Along with these symptoms, within the children, the suppression of HPA axis may lead to mental retardation and decreased growth. That's why this drug should not be given in the children less than 12 years. Another important precaution is that flow sunlight when it is applied on the skin, it can produce some local skin reactions. This may result in the irritation of the skin, some dryness and redness of the skin and it can also develop acne type skin eruptions. Even it can produce stria formation on the skin, skin atrophy resulting in the thinning of the skin. All these side effects can be observed with the fluosinide when it is topically applied on the skin. That's why it should be applied as a thin film at a low dose 
such that the local skin reactions can be minimized. Similarly, this drug can produce one of the condition allergic contact dermatitis. This is again an allergic condition that can be developed with fluosinide. In such conditions, even by the application of this drug, the inflammation is not reduced, which may indicate the development of allergic contact dermatitis in the patients. Now let us see the side effects of this drug. One of the important side effects of fluosinide is the nasopharyngitis. It can produce some nasal congestion and nasopharyngitis. This is because of any systemic absorption of this drug through the skin. And it can also produce some headache and local skin reactions like burning sensation, stinging, dryness of the skin and hypopigmentation can be observed with this fluosinide. Now let us see how this drug acts. Few of the inflammatory mediators can act on their corresponding receptors. So when these receptors are activated, they can stimulate one of the pathway NFKB, nuclear factor kappa B. This NFKB can interact with the DNA where it can produce gene transcription and they can release few of the inflammatory mediators which are responsible for inflammation and development of skin reactions. So inflammatory mediators like IL-4, IL-5, IL-13 and TNF-alpha may be released by stimulation of NFKB pathway. Now fluosinide is the anti-inflammatory agent which is a corticosteroid. It can bind to glucocorticoid receptors which are located in the cytoplasm. So fluosinide can cross the cell membrane, it can bind to these glucocorticoid receptors. When it is bound to these receptors, the heat shock protein 90 is detached and these receptors are internalized into the nucleus. Within the nucleus, they can be dimerized and they can interact with the DNA such that they can release mRNA by gene transcription. This mRNA can undergo the protein synthesis within the ribosomes so that it can produce few of the proteins like lipocartin 1 and annexin A1. These are the anti-inflammatory mediators which can check the progression of inflammation. Similarly, the activated glucocorticoid receptors can also interact with the DNA such that they can inhibit the activation of NFKB pathway so that the release of inflammatory mediators is also reduced. When there is inflammatory stimuli, it can stimulate one of the enzymes phospholipase A2. This phospholipase A2 is a cleavage enzyme which can interact with the phospholipids such that it can produce one of the important mediator arachidonic acid which is a C20 fatty acid. In the next step, COX enzyme, cyclooxygenase enzyme can interact with this arachidonic acid such that it is going to be converted into various mediators like PGE2, prostaglandin E2, PGI2 and thromboxin E2. All these mediators can increase the inflammation, redness and vasodilatation leading to swelling and skin rashes. Now fluosinide is one of the anti-inflammatory agent. It can stimulate the annexin A1 activity. This annexin A1 can bind to the phospholipase A2 where it inhibits the activity of this enzyme. So when this phospholipase A2 is inhibited, the sense of arachidonic acid can be inhibited. Similarly, fluosinide can directly inhibit the COX enzyme activity, thereby it can inhibit the sense of prostaglandins. All these actions may result in anti-inflammatory response. Now let us see the chemical nature of this drug. So this is the structure of fluosinide. Let us give the numbering to the steroid structure. We can start the numbering here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We have given the numbering to these two rings. Then we can give the numbering in this way. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So numbering in the steroidal ring system is fixed and it can be given in this direction only. And this is the 18th carbon and this is the 19th carbon which are the angular methyl groups. Then we can continue the numbering. This is 20 and this is 21. So totally it is having 21 carbon steroidal nucleus. So it is a pregnant derivative and it is having the double bonds at first and fourth position. So we can write this as pregna 14 diene 320 dione because it is having the ketone groups at third position and 20th position. And at the 21st position, it is forming an ester with acetic acid. So we can write this as 21 acetate. Similarly, at the 6th position as well as the 9th position, it is having the fluorine groups. So 6, 9 difluoro. And it is having the hydroxyl groups at 11th position as well as 21st position, which is converted into acetate. So we can represent this as 11, 21 dihydroxy. And then at the 16th and 17th position, it forms a diester with a stone. 
which can be written as 1617 isopropylidene dioxy that is a complete name of fluosinonide so fluosinonide is a derivative of another corticosteroid fluosinolone estonide fluosinolone estonide is having the free hydroxyl group at 21st position which is when esterified it gives the fluosinonide how it is given this drug is available as a cream at a strength of 0.05% as well as 0.1% and this cream should be applied as a thin film to produce low dose applied on the skin for the treatment of psoriasis this cream should be applied twice daily in order to produce efficient response but for the atopic dermatitis it should be applied one time daily but the duration of the treatment should be less than 2 weeks in order to avoid suppression of hp axis so that's all about this drug fluosinonide which is a topical corticosteroid and classified as potent glucocorticoid suppression of hp axis is one of the important precaution with this drug that's why this drug should not be used in the children with age less than 12 years and even in the adults it should be used for less than 2 weeks at low dose with a maximum dose of 60 grams per week should be used in order to eliminate suppression of hp axis local skin reactions are the important side effects that can be observed with this drug and fluosinonide can also produce some headache and nasopharyngitis in the patients so that's all about this drug fluosinonide hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends push your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video